early voting is currently happening. We are now in election season because there's no longer an election day. You get to vote for like a month or something now. It's absolutely crazy. Regardless of how you feel about that, it's time to make a decision for a lot of people. And I'd say the vast majority of people have their mind made up, but it's really about going out and actually voting. So make sure you have a plan to do that. But there are still some, some people out there who haven't made up their mind. The swing voters. And we're getting pretty close to about the time where they need to make a decision. So the question is, how are they going to make that decision? Well, today we're going to look at some clips of some swing voters in some swing states and some regular voters in some swing states talking about the big things that they're passionate about. And you could let me know now in the comments what you think some of the things they're going to mention are. Anyways, let's start with the most important swing state. Pennsylvania. We're going to be looking at some black voters speaking on the topic of the current state of the economy in Philadelphia. And I think that what gets articulated in this video is a direct reflection of how most Americans feel regardless of where they live. So before we get into this clip, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. How hard has inflation hit you? It, it hit me hard. It's hitting me hard. What do you blame for it? I blame the federal government at this point. If a working class mom who works as a paralegal cannot buy a $2 bell pepper because it's now five, imagine a mother living on food stamps. Mm. Imagine a mother who's making minimum wage trying to feed children. Mm. They're killing us without killing us. If you, if you understand that. They're killing us without telling us they're killing us. They're hurting people in ways that they can't help themselves. It's either feed my child or, or how about feed my children and I don't, but I have to go work. This is the unfortunate reality for many Americans, especially over the last few years with the constant increase of prices, whether it be cost of your groceries or your rent, or your gas prices, things are up. And despite what the mainstream media continues to tell us that Bidenomics is working, anybody that's just counting the money in their pocket knows, well, there's not very much money left. And this woman points out the obvious fact that the federal government is the blame. They're the ones that have been printing money nonstop over the last few years, sending hundreds of billions of dollars to countries like Ukraine to fight unnecessary wars, printing unnecessary money and giving it to illegal immigrants, prioritizing them over American citizens. When she's struggling, when P American citizens are struggling to be able to put food on the table, we're giving free food, free housing, free everything to citizens to illegal citizens, non-citizens, who shouldn't even be here to begin with. And Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are the people in charge of implementing these policies. So what on God's green earth are they doing, not prioritizing the American citizens? This is heartbreaking to see for a variety of reasons, but as American citizens, we need to be able to provide for our families. That is the most important thing. As any, it doesn't matter where you live, the most important things that you can feed yourself and feed your family and you can keep a roof over your head. Without those things, literally no other policy is going to matter to you. If you can't survive, nothing else matters, which is why this is such an important issue. And part of the reason why I know for a fact that a lot of Americans want to prioritize American citizens and not those of a foreign nation halfway across the planet to fund some war that we don't support, or whether it be supporting illegal immigrants that are in our country that shouldn't be here to begin with. So let's go to Nevada, where there are some more decided voters, but Nevada is a swing state, and they are in a county that is traditionally blue, but the people in there are going to be talking about the immigration crisis, and the immigration crisis is directly correlated to the economy, they go hand in hand. Your immigration policy is a part of a larger web. So if you allow all of these illegal immigrants in, you know, 20, 30 million of them, whatever the number is, we don't even know for sure how, what that number actually is. That's, and you keep giving away all this money to them, that's going to impact your economy. It's going to impact your crime because, well, they're criminals first and foremost because they shouldn't be here to begin with and their likelihood of committing crime is likely higher. Now, so you got those two things. Then you consider this, cultural cohesion. These people don't speak the language, they haven't assimilated to the culture. 
All of these things play a big factor in the overall makeup of America. And it's why it's the one of the number one issues that people are voting on is immigration, because it's not just so and so coming across the border. It's a part of a very large web. And it's very important to recognize this when you articulate this. It's not that one illegal immigrants the problem. The problem is 20 to 30 million of them all impacting our economy, making it weaker and hindering American citizens is impacting the cultural cohesion of America. Us being able to get along, adequately communicate, us be able to see eye to eye on things, agreeing on what is right and wrong from a moral standpoint, general assimilation, education, all of these things play a huge factor. And then crime. And then there's a bunch of other things that impact this too. But I digress. Let's get into this clip. What issue is most important to you? I'm extremely concerned about the border. Illegals, they gotta go. People are coming here seeking asylum. Baloney. They're coming here for the freebies. When people talk about immigration, they're thinking we're saying we don't want immigrants of any kind, and that's not what people are saying. People are saying that there are people who have come here legally. Why do they get pushed aside to allow people who have not even worked one day in our country, have not paid into the system? I took my brisket and mac and cheese with me to catch Ken Lasker with a to-go order. How closely are you watching this election? Oh, very closely. He was the only Harris supporter we met at lunch, even though Washoe County has historically been pretty politically split. I like how the one woman called out baloney when they mentioned that some of these people are just seeking asylum. And, you know, there probably are very, very, very small percentage of them are seeking asylum. But the vast majority of them are coming here illegally because they know that their lives are going to be better. Not because America is going to offer them opportunity in the sense that they can maybe build themselves up in a legal manner, but in the sense that we're going to give them free food, free housing, for free phones, free Internet, free everything. They're going to get free handouts on our taxpayer dollar. Anyways, I fully agree with those responses, and I think immigration is one of the biggest things that I'm voting on myself personally because of that larger web impact. I'm also pretty focused on culture, but this isn't really the video for me to talk about exactly the reasons I'm voting for. Maybe another time, but in this next clip we're going to watch, we're going to watch a young black man talk about immigration as a crisis. And I mentioned the demographics specifically because immigration actually disproportionately impacts that population group, despite the fact that Democrats claim that they're so supportive of black people. They use identity politics in such a way that is pretty much weaponized. And it's legitimately sad to see because we should just be trying to help all American citizens. But in the context of using Democrat political lingo, these immigration policies disproportionately impact low SES people, which traditionally are black individuals, because it takes away needed resources to help the low income individuals and prioritize non-citizens that shouldn't be here in the first place. Hopefully that all came out right. Regardless, let's get into this clip and listen to him articulate this point. Because I think that this point needs to be articulated more often in America from mainstream people because it's pretty hypocritical for the Democrats to claim that they're so helpful of the black community despite their policies being detrimental for the black community. I agree with the idea of mass deportation largely. You have criminals in this country who are destroying our nation. They're uh, coming in here, getting earmarked bills and policies to open up businesses, get free housing, get access, easier access than those who are legally immigrated to this country to welfare and other benefits. So, like, as a taxpayer, we have to pay for these guys to have luxuries of life, and we don't get anything, especially black Americans who have suffered so much in the system under Democrats. We don't get anything. That's insane. You talked about Springfield, Ohio, and the whole thing with the fluff talk of, oh, grabbing a soundbite about, Haitians or whatever is eating cats and dogs. Y'all trying to change the narrative of what he's really talking about. Change the narrative of really what we're talking about and telling us that's what we should be discussing. No, this here, this is what we're discussing. This here, this is America. And this is what America is about and what we're discussing. I think that this young man articulated that point incredibly well. And honestly, I'd love to know what you guys think down below about the current immigration policies in America. Is it one of the big reasons you're going out to vote? Because you do have a plan to vote, right? Make sure you go out and vote. Vote early. 
You can vote on election day on November 5th, but I highly recommend voting early. You can vote by mail too, but make sure you get that ballot in before it's too late. Make sure you have a plan to go vote. It's so important that we get Donald Trump elected into office. And I personally believe we need to get more Republicans into office, specifically more conservative Republicans, to get things back on track in America. The Democrat Party has got too far. And I say that as somebody who worked for the Democrat Party just a few years ago. And now I'm actively involved with my local Republican Party. Even so much that I'm planning on running for a community college school board in my county as a conservative. So make sure you start getting involved in your local politics. Make sure you go out and vote. Get active. If we want to take back America and get things back on the right path, it starts with you, my friend. Yeah, you, literally you, viewer at home. Now point to yourself and go, me? Yeah, you. It starts with you and it starts with me. We can talk here and complain all we want, but we have to get active. You have to get involved in your local politics. It starts with knocking one door at a time, one vote at a time, one phone call at a time. I'm not saying you got to run for office, okay? But what I am saying is start to pay attention a little bit more. Anyways, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. My name is Beans, and thank you for watching The Daily Beans. Have a blessed day.